So I'm back to that same template, although I have changed the name of it in this session. The master has a plugin, which I don't have. We see this a lot. People use a plugin that they own, and then they send the session off to somebody who doesn't have that plugin, and this is what happens. The plugin gets italicized. So that's one issue. The other issue is sometimes you'll be tying up a lot of processing power of your computer by sending a bunch of tracks to a reverb or a delay or some other processing unit, and you'll be doing that every time you hit play. So there's a workaround that will solve both of those problems. And the tip is to print the effects as an audio file. Now, in the old days, we would solo the lead vocal, solo the effects, and then bounce whatever was soloed. You would hear that. It would create an audio track of the lead vocal and all the effects. You would import that back into the timeline. Then you could mute the original lead vocal and the effects, or at least the sends for that effect for that track and have a more efficient use of your processing power. Remember that if we bounce, file, bounce to disk, we have the choice to import after bounce. Now this is grayed out now because Pro Tools always chops into multiple monos, and it should allow us to import this back in if I choose multiple mono. It's not doing that because I have a sample rate compatibility issue, I think. If I change to 44.1, now I can import after bounce. I could always import after bounce, but this is just an automatic version of it instead of the Shift Command I version of it. You wind up with a stereo file that has the compressor that you like and the reverb that you like, and all the computer has to do is play that audio file. So if you bring that file back into the session, mute the originals, then you're listening to the processed audio without actually processing the audio in real time. Now that system works fine, but as of Pro Tools 11, we have the ability to route this bus to a track or make a new track for it. So if we make a new track for it, create next to current track and call this print effects, notice I'm not saying EFX or SFX like I did with sound effects. These are effects that are on a vocal as opposed to sound effects that are in a movie. Just wanted to point that out. Two different words, two different uses. So this will be good. I actually want the new track to be an audio track. P-R-I-N-T effects. And I'll say create. This track's already going there. It should be routed to the new track. Did I not tell it to go to the new track? Now I will. So now this track's going to that track. I arm this track for recording, and I'm printing the output of this. Assuming I'm only soloing the vocal, I would get soloed vocal through whatever effects it has in processing, and the output of the aux, which is traditionally a reverb or something like that. Now we can use this same system when the client asks you for stems. Stems are typically all the vocals from the front of the song to the back of the song. All the rhythm might be the drum part from the front of the song to the back of the song. So before this feature in Pro Tools, that would take us several passes to do. We'd solo the drums and bounce that. We'd solo the rhythm section and bounce that. We'd solo the vocals, probably the lead vocal and all the harmony vocals and bounce that. Using this system, we can create new tracks for all the things we want to bounce as stems, and everything gets routed to the right place. One pass, we're done. 